the state of Missouri is on a roll when it comes to nullification. While this second example of the state taking back control from the federal government is not on quite as firm a foundation constitutionally as the previous one, I think it's important because I love when states remind their citizens and us that they are sovereign. And I especially love when they remind Washington who created them and set their boundaries up in the first place. So we'll discuss this more next on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stand. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Well, hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here once again with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution and teach the rising generation to be free. As always, head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Find everything you want to know about the Constitution Study. Find out where I'll be. Invite me to come speak at your event. Hey, if I'm going to be in your neighborhood, stop by, say hello. I'd love to meet you in person, discuss whatever's on your mind. I also want to thank those who work so hard to help spread the word. Um, I've been putting their name out a lot lately. Groups like Constitutional Grassroots Movement, Restore the Intent, uh, Conversation on the Culture, all work hard to spread the word. If you're helping to spread the word too, let me know because I really do appreciate it. I also want to thank the band Rebel North for letting me use their music. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm speaking at a lot more conferences. And if you're in, again, if you're attending, I'd love to see you. If you have a conference that you think would benefit, you'd like me to speak at, go to the website, click restore, request a speaker. Let me know about it. I'll see what we can do. So we're going to talk about Missouri again. And in this case, it's House Bill number 296 called the Fourth Amendment's Rights Protection Acts Act. Ooh, this is a bill to prevent state resources from being used to collect personal electronic or metadata for the federal government without a warrant. Now, I wrote previously about the state's Second Amendment Preservation Act in my article called Show Me No Notification. Now, after defining the terms of electronic data and metadata, this bill goes on to talk about uh, how it can be used. So let's take a look here. Uh, this state and its agencies, political subdivisions, special districts, or employees shall not assist, participate with, or provide material support or resources to a federal agency to enable it to collect or facilitate in the collection of a collection or use of a person's electronic data or metadata unless one or more of the following circumstances apply. The person has given informed consent, the action is pursuant to a warrant that is based upon probable cause and particularly describes a person, place, or thing to be searched or, or seized, or the action is in accordance with a legally recognized exception to the warrant requirement. Okay, the idea here is simple, and I love simple legislation. Legislation doesn't need to be 2,000 pages long. The state believes that the collection of a person's electronic or metadata without a warrant is a violation of their Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable search and seizure. Now, uh, in fact, well, let's show you because it's the Fourth Amendment, right? The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. See, since Missouri is a party to the compact that is the U.S. Constitution, they have a say in what the document means. So when Missouri, as a sovereign state, and their legislature has the authority, to, to, they get to determine, is this a violation of the Fourth Amendment? See, they get to determine where, how, and under what circumstances state resources can be used. However, as I discussed in my article, Metadata and the Fourth Amendment, there is one little constitutional problem here. Who does the metadata belong to? You see, I see no constitutional issue with ensuring the protection of a person's electronic data. None whatsoever. I mean, after all, today, most of what we used to call papers, they're now stored as electronic documents. And since, since many of those documents are now stored in cloud-based services, which the Supreme Court has determined is deemed beyond the Fourth Amendment protection, an opinion I strongly disagree with, as I discussed in another article I wrote on Carpenter versus United States. I still have to ask the question, what about the metadata? 
You see, what most people define as metadata includes information created by a service provider and not by the originator of the communication. Now, to get into this, let's look. Um, the legislature of Missouri was nice. They defined things. So they say electronic data, information related to an electronic communication or the use of an electronic communication service, including but not limited to the content, sender, recipient, or format of an electronic communication, the precise or proximate location of the sender or recipient of an electronic communication at any time during the communication, the time or date the communication was created, sent, or received, and the identity of an individual or device involved in the communication, including but not limited to an internet protocol address. Okay, legalese. Information like sender, recipient of electronic data, that's part of the electronic data. The date, diamond, time, and duration of any communication. The location, including the network address of the parties involved. All of these are created and used by service providers in order to supply, and in some cases, bill for their services. The uh, yes in an email, you may put in the sender and the recipient, the data, but guess what? The date and time, how long it took, uh, if you place a phone call or a text message, the location, all of that is actually not created by the sender. It is created by the service provider. And it does. this has nothing about um, things that are not electronic communication. What happens if you save a document in, uh, uh, in Gmail or on Google Docs or on uh, iCloud or OneDrive or Dropbox? See, that's why I said they're constitutionally, they're on a little shakier ground. See, if you did not create the data, how can it be yours? And if it's not yours, how is it protected by the Fourth Amendment? See, I agree with what I believe the state of Missouri is trying to do. They're trying to protect not only the documents of their citizens, but information about them as well. And I believe the Missouri state legislature is trying to protect the spirit of the Fourth Amendment, even if it goes beyond the actual wording of the Fourth Amendment. And as I've said previously, as a party to the compact, the state of Missouri has a say in what the compact means. See, rather than just preventing state resources from assisting the federal government in collecting this data, though, I would like to see this legislation followed up with a proposed amendment to the Constitution. See, I'd like an amendment that to... Uh, uh, an amendment to amend the Fourth Amendment, which sounds a little redundant, but right, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, documents, papers, and effects, including all data and records created by them or about them against unreasonable searches and seizures. See, that's the important part. By adding that underlined language, Fourth Amendment protections will be extended to the intangible information that is so much part of, of our lives in the 21st century. The language also protects data we store in a cloud. Information created about us by third parties, like doctor's offices or cell phone providers. See, this would not only protect that phone metadata that seems to be all up in arms, but your medical and bank records as well, both of which, by the way, are under attack, and this attack is supported by the Supreme Court. I have a whole other article that deals with that. In fact, it's called Carpenter versus the United States, where I review that case and all of the issues with um, the uh, third party doctrine. So I again, I want to thank Missouri. I, I love the fact that you're standing up and protecting your citizens. I think this one's a little weaker than what you did on the Second Amendment, which I talked about last week. But I love the fact that you're standing up and you're telling the federal government, we created you. We tell you what you can and cannot do. We put your boundaries in place. And now we're going to start holding you to them. So again, if you like this, uh, let me know uh, if, if you'd like to see, if you think there's more that could be done about this particular Missouri legislation. Uh, I generally don't get into state legislation except when it has a constitutional uh, point of view, a uh, U.S. Constitution point of view. This, to me, is a great example of states exercising their rights, exercising their sovereignty and telling the federal government 
their their creation, how far they can go. It's about time the federal government has at least tugged a little bit. But uh, this Fourth Amendment thing is an issue. Hey, do me a favor. Write in the comments. What do you think about my amendment, my changes to the Fourth Amendment? Would you do you think that would be a good set of changes? Do you think that would be something beneficial to propose as an amendment to the Constitution of the United States? Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'd love to see it. I'd love to hear it, see what you think. Uh, as always, head over to the website, uh, constitutionstudy.com. Uh, Ask questions. Subscribe to the to the mailing list. I only set up send out about one email a month, just giving you an update what's going on, let you know where things are, are going, where I'm going to be, major milestones. Uh, as always, ask questions. I just answered a question online uh, in uh, the previous episode Thursday last week. You know, I love doing that. I love answering questions and comments. Most of all, although this is going to be all on the short side. I love interacting with with people and helping people see and understand. And, and I learn when I help you learn. So I'm enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, I'm seeing some good numbers on the, the podcast downloads. Uh, not as much on the videos, but that's great. Head over. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. Let me know if you'd like to see me on Twitter. Uh, most of all, I want to see you again the next time right here on the Constitution Study. Thanks. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stand. Came from a long